Greetings and salutations everyone, and welcome back to another Pokemon Unite video. So, as we all know, tomorrow being Wednesday is the dreaded day of mobile of the mobile release of Pokemon Unite, and when it comes there's going to be a huge new wave of new players that, you know, they're going to be starting, they're going to be joining Wang, they're not going to have as many powerful items as other people will have, so I'm going to just sort of, I'm going to tell the truth here, I'm terrified of that because the game is in a really bad state at the moment and there's already enough teammates doing bad stuff and being really stupid and now we're going to have that again with a whole new wave of mobile players just weighing people down as a giant anvil basically so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna talk about some things that are in the game that need changed like cuz at this point now in Pokemon Night the game is over within like the first three minutes doesn't matter what anyone says Usually, first few minutes, you know when you're gonna lose. But first of all, let us talk about buffs, nerfs, and power creeps. Yeah, this is the first part to talk about. Obviously, you guys know Zapdos needs to be nerfed or changed, as I said in my previous video. But there's more that needs to be released. Zapdos, Blastoise, Snorlax, really tough, and Zerora need changed. You guys will probably expect me to say Greninja or Cinderace, but I don't find them that bad. Now, here are all the mains for Blastoise, Dolax, really Tough, and Zero War screaming at me, saying that it's unfair, but I'm holding my ground because here's the thing I'm a Slowbro main. What does Slowbro have that Blastoise doesn't? A little bit of lifesteal does nothing. What does Blastoise have? Blastoise can literally negate knockback, attack groups of people at once, has high enough damage to kill five people at once. His Unite Move is able to steal any objective with complete ease. And it has so much health. Then he's changed. With Darkness and Rapid Spin, he needs to at least suffer knockback or needs to take more damage. Because, like, as a slow may not in a Fury Ace move or the scene, a Blastoise is able to just defend or steal any objectives. Like, it's, Blastoise is meant to be a defender. Blastoise is not a defender. Blastoise is literally an S tier attacker. That's how bad it's gotten. But enough about that. Next up is Snorlax. Oh, so here's something. What's the best tank in the game? Yeah, Snorlax. This is Slowbro main saying that. I don't have anything else to say about that. Here's the thing that Snorlax can do. Snorlax can put you asleep, can go to sleep, and get insane health regen. Can bounce you into the air. Stunning you for like three seconds while the while the rest of the enemy team attacks you while you're in the air, no less. Let's see, Snorlax can also just doll on a goal on enough. Snorlax can hold off a wave of five people with ease. Oh, I mean, Snorlax can push five people off the objective of block. First main change, block. The second block hits, hits a certain amount of people, it needs to just be deactivated because that's stupid. Or it shouldn't have any knockback. Because block pushes people. It can push a group of five people, knock them back, and stun them for two seconds, which is long enough for Snorlax to get close enough to you again and keep using block. Snorlax can literally keep you stunned in one place for at least ten seconds and it's not fun to do it well it's not fun to be on the other side of that. So block needs changed, Snorlax's health needs changed. That will make Snorlax a full tank instead of making Snorlax an attacker defender and support because Snorlax is literally every single wall in the game. The only thing Snorlax is now is the ability to score critical hits and suddenly you have the best character in the game. And yeah, I am annoyed with Snorlax. Now you could say, oh I could just buy Snorlax. I could, but I'm too stubborn too. I'm really just saving up coins because guess what, the second thing, the second Mamoswine comes out, Mamoswine is going to be the best character in the game. And that leads in the power creep. Why do so many modern games now? not have the ability to make a balanced character when they release it. Literally you have games like Borderlands 2 where 2012 you know a couple of years later they added a new character being Greg or Gage and they didn't break the game they just had a new play style but now in a game like Pokemon Unite you can't even make a new character about them being broken so if anyone from Pokemon Unite is watching this literally hire people to play test the character before you release them so you can tell what the problems are it doesn't take a genius to do that but yeah this isn't an attack on the teams that make Pokemon Knight but power creep is a huge problem 
and needs to be changed. But next up is Wiggly Tough. So what can I say about the big pink ball itself being Wiggly Tough? Let's see. Wiggly Tough can do what Snorlax does, but more. Wiggly Tough can knock puns back, chain him with rollout, put multiple people to sleep, and Q Charm makes it so even if you're not attacking Wiggly Tough, you'll get pulled towards them. Which is stupid. So what should you do? Change Q Charm. It, can, it should only affect people that are attacking Wigglytuff. Because I was so many times, I was walking away from a Wigglytuff trying to get back to my goal. I got pulled towards them and I wasn't even interacting with them. Which is stupid. And Wigglytuff should be a support character. Wigglytuff is literally an attacker, support and tank. Just like Snorlax. The only thing Wigglytuff doesn't have, I think, is Critical Hiss. Which, if Wigglytuff has Critical Hiss, then that's terrible. Oh, Wigglytuff has multiple hits as well, double slap? Like really tough, just a less tanky version of Snorlax that does more. And Zero. Zero near nerfed from day one. Zero falls into the power creep. Literally. Zero should be nerfed. It can literally take on. It can only defend the skull by itself. It needs a health reduction and a defense reduction. That's what it needs because you could have a team of five people attacking Zero. You could be high level on it. Next, you decide, oh, I'm going to use Plasma Fist, my knife move, and all that. And then suddenly you kill a team of five people. It's stupid. Like it really is. They're only nerfed from day one, as there was should be nerfed day one. But they're not doing that. They'll probably die a week from now, like next Wednesday, when they realize that there was a problem to begin with. Well, they know it's a, they know it's a problem to begin with. But there was a speedster. There was should be all the there was should have increased moves, but I think all the speedsters should. Did you focus on scoring goals, flanking the enemy team, and stuff like that? But Zero can walk up to the team of five people like an anime. <laughs> like, literally. You could literally take any JoJo scene where a character is walking with another character or badass and just replace the character with Zero and have five people in front of him. Is bad. Now, as for buffs, well, I'm not going to talk about buffs because if I talk about buffs, more people are going to scream at me. The only buff I would say as a slow woman I'd want is a little bit more lifesteal. That's about it, but I don't think that's even a good counter. Now, let's talk about the big bird itself, Zapdos. The only problem I have with Zapdos is that it could be stolen. Here's how most interactions go. Zapdos spawns, the two teams go to Zapdos, one team KOs the other, the other team respawns, goes to Zapdos, and the blaster uses his knife move and steals Zapdos at the last second. Thus making all of the hard work of the team that had the advantage null and void. That should change. I stand by my pre by the point I made in the previous video. Zapdos should be based on which team does the most damage. Zapdos just shouldn't be Gen Hao. It should be the, it should be something like, oh, this team did 50% damage to Zapdos, or like 60% damage to Zapdos. The other team did 40%. So both teams get the instant score. Because otherwise, Zapdos just oppresses the team that's losing. Like another thing is that you could maybe give the losing team a Zapdos in their base that they KO, but it'll probably get KO'd and people are going to complain about that anyways. So I say Zapdos should not have health regen and Zapdos should be based on which, on the amount of damage both teams have done to it. Because it's not fun to have all your hard work like gain Zapdos to be, done, to be completely ignored and for the game to say you know what this team wins because they just walked in and used a knife move and boom. <laughs> like it should be based on the team on the damage these teams do, I think that's a more fair way to look at Zapdos. Because then both teams have a chance to score. But enough about that, because I'm getting sick and tired of talking about buffs and nerfs for Zapdos. Let's talk about teammates and team composition. First of all, something people say about this game is that if you pick Slowbro, you're trolling. No. Okay, I'm a Slowbro main and I'm not trolling. There are Slowbros out there that do troll. Specifically the ones to pick telekinesis. Yeah, I said it. First of all, this will be a tip at the end of the video, but don't pick telekinesis on Slowbro. Okay? I don't care if people say it's amazing. It doesn't do anything. You can be attacked while using telekinesis, and telekinesis can miss. Meanwhile, you have amnesia, a much superior move in every regard. Gives you increased defense and lets you do more damage and gives you a little bit of health regen. So don't pick Telekinesis. But here's the thing. If you pick Talonflame, you're trolling, okay? 
Yes, I hear all the Talon Flame minions screaming at me. Yeah, well, I'm screaming right back, okay? Talon Flames are the worst in this game. By far, they're the worst. But most of them, they just go to center, get a couple of kills, then head to top lane, usually where I am. They then try to attack two enemies at full health and get flanked by the Zero Warrior and die. Okay? I say just uh, to any Talon Flame main out there, just don't pick Talon Flame anymore, just pick a different Pokemon. Because you're stealing center from Pokemon they could use them more like an Absol or a Foki or Cinderace, you know, stuff like that. And yes, I know people like playing the Pokemon they like playing, and that's fine. But if that was a large guy I was using, guess what? I wouldn't be a Slowbro main. Yeah, I'm only picking Slowbro because no one else picks Tank. They're always picking attackers. And this isn't ranked. Where at the moment, ranked is a bit of a problem. I'll get to that in the next point. But if you like if you pick Talonflame you're trolling. Next up, don't be a show off. Okay? Don't be that person that just decides, hey, I'm gonna walk in here, KO these three people, and then die. Look at the situation that your team is up against and decide when the best time to strike is. There's grass there that you can hide in for a reason. Because usually, that's what the center player should be doing. They should be hiding, trying to flank someone. That way they get a huge advantage. And the other thing is, if you score a goal, help your team score a goal. I've had so many games right now where literally, like, literally because I'm a tag, I usually end up having a full stock of points that I could score. So I go and try to score a goal with my team. My teammate scores like a two point goal and then they run away from me when I have 30 points. And they like literally go and chase like some Pokemon center or that. If you're like you need to look at the map and if your team has points, help them score the points if it's a high amount. Because what's the goal of Pokemon Unite? Have the most points by the end of the game. How do you do that? By destroying the enemy goals by scoring points. So play by the objective. Like, literally, it's not a difficult thing to do, it's just using your head. But that is probably the most annoying thing. Another thing is, this is going to happen. I know it's going to happen with this new wave of new people. Don't search for the game if you have something to do. I've had so many games where people have not waited up or have been AFK that I have PTSD now from that. There is something worse, and that's when people wait till the last second to ready up. Then they ready up. I didn't go AFK to start the game. But they don't go like full AFK, they want circles and spawn. Like, there needs to be a bit of a poor system in the game for stuff like that. Like a bad teammate or something. Like you could say good job or bad job. Perhaps. Because if someone's winning circles and spawn during the game, you can't report them for being AFK. You can try, but it's not going to do anything. Because they won't be counted as AFK, so they won't lose fla fair play points. And it's one of the worst things. Also, people need to think, like, it'll be a tip at the end of the video, but look at the team in the lobby and think about how the team works well and stuff like that. There are, like, team pairs that I want to talk about, like, specific Pokemon, but I haven't found a good pair, to be completely honest. Like, for Slowbro specifically. The only teammate I would want to see on my side is usually like Snorlax. And even then, if, a, if I'm a tank and there's a Snorlax on the team, I'd want the Snorlax to go to the other path as me to start defending the goal. But yeah, help your teammates score goals, and if your team is way low on health, try and protect them so they can get back to the goal. Yeah, so if it's something like you're obviously going to die, if the enemy team gets all those points and then KOs you, after they KO your teammate, then you're just gonna look stupid at that point. <laughs> Especially if it's a tank. If your tank's winning on HP, you need to do what a tank would do for you. Or it should do. Like, here's the thing. As a tank, if you see a teammate low on health, your first priority should be saving them and taking any damage they would. I don't care what people's argument has been, oh, I could die though. Or get KO'd. Like, that's the thing. You're, that's what a tank is supposed to do. They're supposed to defend. That's why I think Zorlax needs a nerf, so it's actually a tank. And it's focused around defending goals, not oppressing them. But yeah, it's just a stupid thing. 
here's another thing, it's just on the point of Zapdos, but if your team is winning and Zapdos spawns, don't attack Zapdos. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that if you're winning and Zapdos spawns, you should be trying to keep the enemy away from Zapdos. Because if they get it, they're probably going to win. There have been so many games where literally my team and I were at Zapdos and we were winning. So I decided I'm going to attack the enemy team. Make sure they can steal Zapdos at the last second. Because it's the thing, if you're winning and no one's attacking Zapdos, you could literally keep the enemy off of Zapdos and it'll have full health. It's two minutes. You can keep people off for two minutes. It's very simple. The only other option your team has is to attack goals. Like, that's the thing. If you're winning, don't go for Zapdos. Go to Zapdos, but just keep the enemy away from it. Because there were so many games where we won just barely. But that's because the enemy team actually did get Zapdos. Because my team never fought to faint to keep the enemy off of Zapdos. They just think, oh, I have to get Zapdos. There'd be so many games where it was a 30 point lead at the very end because the enemy team got Zapdos because they steal Zapdos at the last second. But that is just fame in general. And that's pretty much it for teammates, I want to say. So I'm going to give some tips. Just basically fame. Just for the game in general. First of all, communicate with your team. Or at least pay attention to the map. Figure out what your team is struggling with and try to help them with it whenever you can. You don't have to use voice chat, it's not difficult to just use your instincts. Now, second tip, find a main for each role. This is something I've learned recently, because there have been games where other people have chosen Slowbro and I've been confused, thinking, oh, I can't pick Slowbro, so who do I pick? Slowbro is the only character I have over 100 games in, as you guys will see in the video. That's how bad it is. You need to literally communicate with your team and figure out a main for each role. So if you're a tank and someone picks that specific tank, find either a second character in that role or find a different role to play in general since you have a backup plan. Now, another tip. If you're in ranked specifically, if you get if you come into ranked and you get paired up with an awful team, like a borderline terrifyingly bad team, they don't search for the game instantly. For me what I do is in ranked, if I get paired with a bad team, I go and play a quick match and then start searching for a game. Because by that point, that bad team is paired up with someone else. And that usually works. I usually get paired up with a good team at that point. Now, the next point is ignore tier lists. Okay? Yes. 